hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. No, no, bro, you the man, bro. You who the who had a pass in the relationship? Who the man? You trying to learn these scriptures, and I ain't even finished going over the scriptures. If you really want to change, you got to be able to be patient within your spirit. And then your wife has to also ref be a reflection of that. Is that your wife? What you running after? Off the kingdom of heaven do you want to know how to bring forth the kingdom of heaven or you love living like we living right now not owning anything always on the run always trying to figure out where our next meal gonna come from always trying to get a new lick a new hustle do y'all want to know how to run the earth in righteousness this earth is yours this earth is ours you hear that my brother my sister what's your name what's your name bro bro what's your name Jason, nice to meet you, Jason. What's your name, sis? Y'all together? You with him? You with him? Good, good. Do you know who you are according to the Bible? Right now, we're going over the book of Deuteronomy. Have you heard this information before? That you are an Israelite. God calls you Israel. He didn't call you African American. We're older than African American. We're not black. We're not Negro. We're not colored. We are the children of Israel. That's what this is what we base that right. We have American nationality because we're citizens of America. Hey, do what you got to do, but get a flyer and contact us, bro. Right? No, no, come here, come here. You you got a question about fringes? I ain't forgot about you. You ain't finna run away that quick. I was trying to make a point to the sister to show her one of the curses about us being an astonishment. I'm not finished with you, but I'm gonna get to you about these fringes. What's going on? Really? I'm gonna read you two scriptures. And then I want you to determine what we should do and who we should follow. Give me numbers. And then we're gonna go to Matthew 5 and then we're gonna go to Acts 5. Alright? Read. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment. To bid is to command. I'm commanding you. I'm instructing you. Children of Israel, wear fringes in the borders of your garments. He has it. They have it. Right. Our wives have it. That's a commandment. When has the commandments changed and we're not supposed to keep commandments? Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. For how long? Throughout their generation. Just now because it's a fashion trend. Throughout their generation. What does it mean throughout your generations? You the man, bro. You the man. You the man. Throughout your generations. Forever. You agree? For as long as you're generating, that's forever. Ain't no stop to that. Give me Matthew 5, 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. These is the letters, the words of Jesus Christ. They read and write, right? Christ said, think not. Don't even have the thought that I came to change the law. I didn't come to do that. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. Anything that the prophet said, Moses was a prophet. The Lord gave Moses the laws to give to us. So when we read about fringes, that's something that the prophet stated. Christ didn't come to destroy that. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot 
or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. You hear that? Whoever shall break the least. That's a least commandment. You understand that? That's understood. That's the least commandment. Keeping these fringes, that's the least. Growing your beard, that's the least commandment. Because it's easy to do. It takes more effort to cut it off than to allow it to grow, right? That's cool. That's cool. You, you, you grow what you grow, right? Sister, it's easy. Hold on. No, bro, you the man, bro. You, who the, who had the pass in the relationship? Who the man? You trying to learn these scriptures, and I ain't even finished going over the scriptures. If you really want to change, you got to be able to be patient within your spirit. And then your wife has to also ref be a reflection of that. Is that your wife? What you running after? What's more important, God or just a friend you just met up with? Alright, listen to the word of God. Now, you want to know, should you wear fringes? Yes, you have to wear fringes. That is a commandment. Alright? Read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. So that man that taught you is, is a fashion or it's a trend just to be wearing fringes, he's lying to you. He's telling you not to keep the commandments. He's telling you to break the commandments. The Lord said whoever teaches you to break the commandments, what's going to happen? He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. That means you're not being called into the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to make the kingdom of heaven. Because you are allowing men, you're putting your trust in men again. After we came out of this oppression. We came out of this oppression. And we went into Christianity. Believing in these lives without questioning it. And now we're coming into this understanding. And we're allowing men to tell us what we should and shouldn't do against the Bible. You know why that's a problem? That's a problem because you don't read. You have to read. Give me that in Isaiah 34. The Lord gave you a commandment to read. You have to read so no man pulls a wall over your eyes. Okay? That man told you to blatantly break the commandments. And you out here doing it. He was saying like how people wearing them now, they wearing it just like a fashion, man. That's all that's what I'm saying. But where's yours? If you know it's a commandment, where is yours? You tripping. 34, 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. So after today, you're going to go grab them though, right? Because the Lord said you ain't going to get into the kingdom of heaven if you allow men to trick you. Right? Read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That goes for you too, sister. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Read. No one of these shall fail. You, you know how that's true? How none of those commandments or those prophecies should ever fail? We read about the children of Israel becoming an astonishment. Didn't we just bring out some points to point to us as being astonishments? That didn't fail. That holds true even to today. That holds true even to today, doesn't it? So none of these should fail. So you have to be admonished to keep these commandments. One of those commandments is read. How often do you read your Bible? You know it's hard too If you're just reading your Bible and there's no one instructing you Because you can read it, read it, read it Without comprehension and really wouldn't Grasp what's actually being stated Yeah See, now uh, Finish that and then we're going to go to Acts chapter 8 Seek ye out of the book of the Lord And read No one of these shall fail None shall want her mate there's nothing you can make the Bible with. People like to say that Muhammad was a prophet. And they like to try to make that with the Bible. Those two don't go hand in hand. The Bible stands alone on its own. And it doesn't need anything else to verify it. We verify that we're the Israelites according to the curses in Deuteronomy 28. No other Bible or no other book substantiated that. We didn't need no other source to articulate that. Right? 
give me Acts 8 um, when Philip was with the eunuch. Because you need someone to guide you through the scriptures. You can read it all day. But there has to be a learned man teaching you true and proper understanding. All right? Read. Acts chapter 8 and verse 31 of verse 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip. You hear that? So, Philip heard a man reading the Bible. But he asked him, he said, do you understand what you're reading? And this is what he's saying. And he said, how can I, except some man should guide me? What, what was that? How can I, except some man shall gu should guide me? You need a guide. The unit understood that he needed a guide. He was reading in the book of Isaiah. He didn't understand what was going on. It's hard to read. It's hard to understand some of these things. Give me Job 11 and 6. Because the Bible isn't just cl clear cut. You have to have read it. You have to have had me and read it to you. You have to have contextual understanding. And then there's metaphors in the Bible as well. Read. The book of Job, chapter 11 and verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. That they are double. What's that? That they are double. We found the secrets of wisdom in this Bible from Genesis to Revelations. He said, these scriptures are double. Read. To that which is. To that which is. It's like a metaphor. You understand what a metaphor is? A metaphor is like a simile. Do you know what a simile is? A comparison or contrast. Like I'm, I'm telling you, it's raining cats and dogs. But cats and dogs ain't really raining out the sky. Right? That's like a metaphor. This Bible is similar. You have to be able to put it together precept upon precept. Somebody have to show you how to go precept upon precept. Just like I'm doing. I'm reading a little bit here. And then I'm going back and reading some. Right? But I'm making a point. The point that I'm making right now is you need a guide. Are you willing to have a, 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 a man guide you in the scriptures? Okay, all praises. Give me Deuteronomy 22. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's that going into? What's that talking about? Cross-dressing. Right, right. What spirit becomes a man when he puts on a woman's garment? What spirit does he embody? Yeah, 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 effeminate, yeah. So what do you think if a man puts on a woman's garment, what do you think a sister, what spirit she puts on when she puts on men's garments? What's a man's garment? Right, my brother, my brother, you hear that? What spirit does a sister put on when she puts on men's pants? You don't even pay attention that she puts on a different spirit when she puts on men's clothes. A man, when he puts on a dress, does he become effeminate or does he become more masculine? You know, you know it. How about you? He puts on a skirt and becomes effeminate. The same happens for both sex. So the Lord is telling us, do not cross-dress. Let's see how he feels about cross-dressing. For all that do so, everybody who is a woman, who puts on skirts, or a woman who puts on pants, or a man who puts on skirts, the Lord said what? Uh, for all that do so are abomination. What's an abomination? Something disgusting, utterly detestable. The Lord can't stand it, he hates it. What do you have on? How does the Lord feel about you at this particular moment? He don't like it, but there's mercy for you. That mercy that you have is for you to hear these scriptures and say, hmm, I never was taught this before. No man ever guided me through these scriptures to learn that before. So now my next move should be Acts 3 and 19. My next move should be, I got to do something to show the Lord that I fear him, that I love him, that I want the kingdom of heaven. 
Because remember, to get into the kingdom of heaven, you have to keep what? The law. One of the law said the women should wear what? Dresses. Read. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore. Do what? Repent ye therefore. No, stay the same. Repent ye therefore. That's what we're about. None of us grew up wearing these. Hey, Officer Maccabees, you grew up wearing these? Oh. You grew up wearing these fringes? We repented. We heard just like you heard. We heard somebody teaching just like we're teaching. And we was like, you know what? Me, myself in particular, I read Genesis 1, 2, or 3 and, and put it down because I didn't understand it. And when I heard men bringing out that understanding, I was like, that's where I need to be. I was never a church dude. I grew up around here. I was never a church dude. Probably a, a, a tenant once or twice. But that wasn't for me. I heard the word of the Lord and something clicked in me. Just like it's clicking in you. Look how many people that came and left. Something ain't clicking in them, but something clicking in you. So you got to show the Lord that I want to change. And that change is repentance. Read. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Be converted. That means be changed. No longer can we say it's okay and cool to be an abomination to the Lord as a woman wearing pants. You have to think, Lord, I don't want you to think I'm disgusting to you. Because what does he do to people who are disgusting? What's that, Zephaniah 1 and 8? Let's go to Zephaniah 1 and 8. This is what he do to people who dress outside of his ordinances. He got a specific order for us, right? Read. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. And it shall come to pass. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish all the princes and the king's children. Woo! He's going to punish the princes and the king's children. We are princes of God. We are princes who have power with God. Our sisters, our daughters, they are princesses. He said he's going to punish them. He's not, you, you, you sure you're reading it right? He's not going to hug them? What are you going to do? That I will punish no, he's going to tiptoe through the tulips and give kisses. I will punish. You hear that? The Lord's going to punish who? The princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed. Clothed or wearing. With strange apparel. Strange apparel. It's strange for a man to be in a dress. That's not normal. That's something that became popular today. That's something that's recent where men will go out and behave as women. It's recent since uh, 1950, 60, 1950, 1960 that the women started really wearing pants. It's even more strange, or 18, one of them. That's a recent thing. It's even more strange that our sisters wear underwear outside. That's strange. Stretch pants. Leggings, that's underwear. That goes under your clothes. That's strange. Showing your shape, showing everything you got, that's strange to the Lord. We had to come to understand that that's strange behavior. A long time ago, I used to think that was okay because everybody else was okay with it. That's not okay according to God. We're trying to teach our people how to bring forth the kingdom of heaven. And it's not going to come forth by us continuing to do the same thing that we've always done. We've always stood in front of this corner store. We've always stood out selling drugs to our people. We've always hated our people. We have to do something different to change if we won't really change. We still don't, we don't, we still don't own nothing up and down Roosevelt because we keep doing the same things. We have to change. And God's showing us the keys to change right here. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support 